All right, and we are live. Welcome to the first episode of the Turaco Creative Cast. I am your host, Frank Salazar, and this is my co-host, Anna Rob. Before we get into our guest, we have here our very first guest of the show. I just want to let you know, if you're not subscribed, uh, because this is a brand new channel, uh, you know, hit the subscribe button. Uh, subscribe and click the bell icon so you get auto notifications. And see, we got some comments here already. So we already got people in the chat, so you know, just a quick hello to Project Get Fit, Jackson Galloway, uh, some guy named Jonathan Boring, and someone named Anna Raup. So we got some people in the in the chats, and I'm just gonna show this real quick. We are glad. We're happy. <laughs> All right, and usually, uh, if if you're from the other art cast that we used to uh, do, uh, you might notice we don't have one of our regular co-hosts, uh, Keith Harper. He wasn't able to uh, come on uh, uh, tonight, but I did want to show that his comic, the Davy Rocket Almanac, is now available, and I already got my copy. And there's a uh, a link tree in the description below, so you can get. You can uh, probably get your own copy, and let me just uh, show his uh, his link tree here, so you can just. All right, so just uh, check out that link tree, link tree dot link tree Keith Harper, and just a, a reminder: we're still doing the uh, bug cast uh, challenge for. When we get Anna and also Keith Harper to 100 subs, Anna and I will be eating some bugs on a li live stream, and we'll be doing a special live stream. We already got some topics, uh, some things that we want to do for that show. So if you want to see that, you know, subscribe to Anna and to Keith, and go ahead and subscribe to this channel because this is a brand new channel. So all the subscribers we can get uh, better. And uh, like I said, my name is Frank Salazar. I make comics and not excuses. I'm going to turn it over to Anna Rob. Hi, I'm Anna Rob. Uh, I do a bunch of creative things. I make masks sometimes for fun. And my main focus is on comics. I'm creating uh, a bunch of stories and stuff in the background. Scenes here. All right, and we have a special <laughs> guest today. Uh, Jonathan Boring, and today's topic is boring conversations. And very, Jonathan, very uh, tell us a, just about a few things about himself. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I just want to ask. Uh, I'll just start off the the question, and, and Jonathan, you can just uh, go in and just tell us about yourself. Uh, what are the some of the uh, creative uh, uh, outlets that you're you know, some of the creative interests that you uh, have right now that you're doing right now? Yeah, hey, hey, I'm I'm Jonathan Boring. I'm uh, more of like a, a freelance uh, entrepreneur right now. I'm part owner of a company, but also I do a lot of um, uh, social media marketing for some larger um, channels, including like Investment Joy, um, and also um, you know, King Random, who has half millions uh, followers right now on TikTok. So most of I'm more on the management side, but I do a lot of stuff creative as well. So I mean, yeah, I'm some of my larger product. I'm most of the platforms I'm working on right now, mostly YouTube and Instagram, but I'll be expanding just a lot, some more YouTube content pretty soon. We're, I'm, three, I'm 3D printing a 13 inch tall Among Us dude that has a uh, <laughs> an LED visor in him. So you'll be able to take him apart, but he'll, he'll be on my shelf pretty soon. Very cool. Very yes. cool. And also uh, Jonathan and one of our, our the people in the comments right now, they have a podcast on Twitch called Unpopular, Unpopular Topics, and there, there's a link to that in the description below, so check that out. Anna and I were a guest last week, and that is still up there, so you can go uh, watch that if you want. And, uh, you know, Anna, do you have any uh, uh, questions for, for Jonathan? Uh, yeah. So you mentioned your 3D printing project, and I'd be interested to hear you elaborate on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. I've been getting more into three D printing recently. I uh, senior year and sophomore year of of high school. Right. <laughs> I have okay. 
Oh, we'll talk about bugs later. I, th I was working on a 3D model of a bug in Photoshop a few months ago. We'll talk about it later, though. Um, so I was into 3D printing. Uh, I came and started school to get a, an Ender 3 ex uh, extended, which is like 4,200 bucks, right? They got two of them. So I had a bunch of practice on those, got a 3D print, a bunch of stuff. Um, <laughs> yay, Jackson, free advertising. Yes. Um, Jackson's a, one of the co-hosts on Unpop Unpopular Topics. Really cool dude. But mm -hmm. yeah. So I did a lot of 3D modeling, learned just the basics of it. Um, started out in like uh, Tinkercad, which is free. It's by Autodesk. It's all web, web browser based. So Tinkercad.com. Um, and I was using Thingiverse, Thingiverse um, for most of my 3D models. Okay. Like <laughs> for a while I was like 3D printing fidget spinners and then selling them on campus. <laughs> so <laughs> the side hustle I had during that time, a lot of special ed kids wanted them. So I was just 3D printing them a lot of them actually. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, for a Christmas present this, last, this past year, um, I got myself an Ender 3 Pro. So I've been just like 3D printing quite a few things. Um, oh. And it's been, most of my projects have been more of just like maintenance wise because it's been this like up and downhill of just like, okay, this part in the printer is broken. And it's been less of fun projects and more of how can I improve this printer? So now I'm like, I'm past that stage of improving it and more of, okay, what projects can I make that actually um, be viral on TikTok, right? There's a lot of content and just 3D content in general um, on TikTok. There's some, but not that much good. A lot of the stuff, it's like little 3D print, like little trinkets, right? Where it's like super, super small stuff. Where it's like, okay, I, I 3D printed a, an Among Us dude inside of a card deck, right? So, I mean, no one's really printing, oh, hey, I, I printed the Mandalorian helmet at three times scale. Like, no one's doing those, right? Those are fun. So, I want to focus on more on the larger side of it. 3D film is pretty cheap as well. I mean, you just go on Amazon, you buy the first one, like Hacksmith, I think it's like 18 bucks for a kilogram, right? So yeah. I, buy, I can print like two of these projects. So it's like $8 for the entire project. I'm just using a, I already have an Arduino, but I'll be using a Raspberry Pi um, with a with a touchscreen on it. So that'll be the, I think I'll make that on the back side. So I'll have like this touch screen control of the, um, <laughs> of the space suit. So I'll be able to control like vital signs and whatnot, put that on the screen and, and make that an after effects. But this fun details like that, whereas I already have stuff and just like put it in each project and then make a video about it, that kind of stuff. Cool. Oh, that, yeah, that sounds really awesome. Yeah. So. Now, did you have a, a experience tinkering around with actually creating 3D models or are you just like, getting experience with the 3D printing itself? Yeah, no, I have a lot of both. Yeah, um, <laughs> the entire senior year, we made us. It's the website itself, by the way. Um, we made furnicharge.com. So mm -hmm. we made. I made a bunch of three D models of this like wireless charging nightstand that we made. That was like all fireproof. So oh, awesome. yeah. So we we, we went out um, and just competed nationally. We won like first for like, like booth design because I made a bunch of three D models and animations in Blender. So mm -hmm. that was like my actual like most important three D project that I've done. Right. Been a lot of more like smaller stuff where it's um 3d printing like replacement tripod heads and stuff like that so i'm more experienced i consider myself like intermediate right now not super advanced but intermediate in both areas i usually like, fusion 360 is my go-to right now it's just, like 3d modeling i'm going to switch more over to like um probably autodesk like inventor probably mm -hmm. oh wow sounds sounds good um and you you mentioned that you're an entrepreneur what other things uh you know have you have you uh, you know gotten involved in you yeah mentioned and, a, i think kickstarter yeah. also so. yeah we're gonna be launching a kickstarter um the end of this month so we'll be doing some um it's like a music card game so that more that'll be all released in the next few weeks but <laughs> i'm really looking forward to that it's been a lot of work also doing work is overall for like card games, it's really cool because like we're in this time where it's like, okay, we can use like the tabletop simulator or like making 3D models of the cards by rendering rendering them in real time versus doing them in Blender where it's like frame by frame. So mm -hmm. even just like for doing like Kickstarter assets and whatnot, it's been very, very cool. Because now we're, we're in, instead of taking an hour for a project, I'm doing it in a minute. So like just on the back end, it's like almost anyone create a card game now. and publish it, put it to Kickstarter, and if they get funded, go through a distribution house in the USA. So it works quite well. Oh, that sounds, uh, sounds uh, really awesome. What's the name of the, the Kickstarter? 
of the card yeah, game. Uh, it's by Connector Games. It'll be called Note to Note, and that'll be coming out pretty soon. I would next like, week and a half. All right. What has been your uh, overall experience and sort of like what you've learned from uh, working on these sort of Kickstarter projects in <laughs> general? Yeah, I know for me, it's more of just learning how to be flexible with my time, right? Because it's like also being a, a college student, right? It's like, okay, how do I balance my time between that? But also like, but also being like um, quite avid, like in my church community as well. It's like, okay, well, I want to be able to serve, but also how do I manage my time well? So I've just, I have this like routine now of cranking out all my college homework for the entire week, like Monday and Tuesday, and then thir- Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, my entire week's all free. So, yeah, so, so then I focus on Tuesday and Wednesday is typically my day to crank out anything regards to like connector games and just cranking out any of that in Photoshop, um, Illustrator, and anything like that, or like card design um, and layouts. And then after that, then it's all free time working on like TikTok stuff and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And uh, and anyone uh, that's been watching the, the show lately, uh, back when it was, I can't believe it's not the Arcast, we had. Uh, King Random as a guest, uh, I want to say about two weeks ago, and you know it was Jonathan who actually introduced him to us. So, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, so you know, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, it's really cool just how we're able to get clients like that. It's like all all we do is just message them on Instagram. A lot of people who have like a big following on TikTok only have a few thousand followers on Instagram, so they're pretty active on there. It's pretty mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. Wow. Nice. So you said you were like a um, social media managing as well, and what's that kind of yeah. like? Yeah, I know it, it, it's it, it's very interesting, right? So we're, we come from the um, the Excel world, right? We're, we're looking at statistics and whatnot, and okay, it's like um, what what times to post stuff, but also um, the most effective videos, but also like how do we make money on this, right? So it, it's we branch out on a, marketing a marketing and then also managing a channel is pretty difficult right so mm-hmm. f- finding ways that you can make your channel profitable but also finding advertisers who are actually um applicable in a sense right it's like for example i financial <laughs> financial sponsors for like acorn like M- m1 finance are going to sponsor an art dude doing like <laughs> skittle art right so right. it's like okay how do we find good sponsors for this right like we could build their <laughs> we could build their logo um in skittles right and we could do that as yeah, King Random does like a lot of the skill stuff. I know he was on the the um, the camp of this. And this is an art podcast, right? But mm-hmm. what was what was cool of that too is like a lot of his content. It's just blowing up, right? Which is like him going reversing and doing Skittle art. And it's like, okay, how do we market this? So you can't really do a sponsor spot saying, hey, you go to my M1 Finance page, right, and get five free stock. So for him, now we're looking at sponsors like Oreo, Oreo or Skittles, and having them actually sponsor the, the materials he's building with. So, I mean, and that as well, I mean, their cost is almost nothing. So it's pretty more, pretty affordable. Like M1 Finance, so they're, we're going to be getting a percentage, not a per video. So it's hard to find sponsors sometimes. And also ones that are appropriate for the the client you're working with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would guess so. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should get some uh, sponsors for our art cast. <laughs> 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 Yeah, uh-huh. once you're past like the ten thousand mark on the subs, then it's more then that's marketable. Yeah, mm-hmm. but we can still use like affiliate links, for example, like um, Webull or any other platforms like that, where it's a affiliate. Also, do like Amazon mm-hmm. affiliate stuff like that, where it's like yeah. we can set that up, and that's beef. You don't have to go to them and get permission. Oh yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah I use Amazon affiliate links. Uh... I've used them before, so I need to start using them again. <laughs> yeah, I just use Amazon Smile because with Amazon Smile, it's just it's fun to support a charity or charity that you care about, right? Where it's mm-hmm. even like sending links to people for my friends to go buy stuff. I'll just use them the Amazon Smile link because I have it defaulted on my Amazon app, right? So then you're like supporting a cause you like. That's cool. Yeah. I'm taking notes. <laughs> And uh, that's Jonathan's Instagram there on the screen. So you can uh, check him out on there. And it's also in the description below. And 
this is the uh, Unpopular Topics uh, Twitch stream, uh, also in the description below. So, you know, check those out. So I know that you also uh, enjoy doing some video editing and you play around with uh, photo editing in Photoshop as well. <laughs> yes. Talk about that. <laughs> Be happy to, yeah. Um, someone said that Jackson said no bugs. I'm going to bring up bugs. All right. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I've been, <laughs> yes, I've been doing um, quite a bit of Photoshop in the past few years, right? My uh, sophomore um, junior and senior year, my school gave me a free license for the entire Adobe suite, right? Like, okay, I'm gonna emphasize on this. So a lot of that time was spent Photoshopping a lot of images, um, also doing like thumbnails for YouTube videos. I did that for a good few months. And that was good just learning the basics of Photoshop. Now I'm, mm -hmm. people call me a Photoshop wizard, but I'm not, right? It's like, yes, I can like remove wa the Jolstein's watermark from your school photo if you don't wanna pay for it, but <laughs> I've done that twice now. <laughs> but I mean like, for, for, the, for the most part though, I mean, most of my Photoshop abilities where it's um, a family photo where like you're not in it. Okay, I'll Photoshop you in that. Or um, I've done a lot of the the vector art, the vector po portraits. I do those in Photoshop because Illustrator is a pain to work with in groups. Um, organizing files and whatnot is way easier in Illustrator. Well, Photoshop, not Illustrator. <laughs> yeah. So I've been using Photoshop a lot more recently. Even this like the past week I was in Photoshop designing cards, right? It's just, Illustrator is nice and all for working with like the SVGs and all the, your vector graphics, but then Photoshop's getting better and better and better at that. Like at what point do we get rid of Illustrator? So. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Now, just the bug Jackson, I'll bring up the bugs now. Um, yeah. if a, a, cool, a cool project you can do in Photoshop is um, importing any bug um, PNG, right? Uh, from there, you <laughs> convert it to a smart object, right click on it, go down to the very, very bottom, click new 3D extrusion, and then from there you can make a bevel. So you'll have a flat bug that has a bevel on the back. So like beetles, pretty beetle in Photoshop, just from an image. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I did wow. that as well to flex on my teachers because we did that as a, like a 3D project. So we had to make like a 3D room in Photoshop. And it was like, this is the wrong program for this. Yeah, I end up helping a lot of my friends, and especially like the junior year. A lot of them have the Photoshop class, and it's like, take this this <laughs> this dish of butter and make a three D model of it. Okay, now use the. They'd have you walk through a bunch of steps, and it's like, well, I know a more efficient way to do this, and they're actually telling you, and you get marked down for not using that way that they told you. And it was. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, there's the certification, um, which is the only way to get certified in um, Photoshop and Adobe program is called Certiport. And mm -hmm. it's pre-reverse logic. You actually do better if you have no experience going into Photoshop and learning it because what it, it's all web-based. Um, it's a web-based version of Photoshop, right? So there's a, cer a certain way of doing it. For example, if I told you to um, make a rectangle and turn it gray, you can't use any shortcuts and you have to go through the, you can't use the, Every way of doing it is the exact opposite that I would have done it. And it's like twice as long. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that, you have to learn it that way. And then when I tell people a better way to do it, but then they get marked down on the test, it's like, okay, you have to go through their practice portal and just learn how do they do it. And then afterwards, once you get certified, do it your own way. It's, oh, uh, they're working on an AI pretty soon. <laughs> I was talking with one people who do the certification. There'll be an AI pretty soon. So it's like, it'll scan the final result and see if it's the same. And if it's the same as the final result, then you'll actually mark it right. But that's like another few years to come though. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty frustrating. I didn't do quite well on that test. Oh, well. Cause I've been using, I was using it for like a good, like two and a half years before taking the test. So it was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. I had to relearn a lot of Photoshop. Oh, well, cool. And if anyone watching, I know we have a whopping four uh, viewers right now. If you're wondering why it's called boring conversation, it's not because the conversations themselves are boring. Uh, Jonathan's last name is boring, so we're just letting him talk. And but I do want to ask you uh, something because uh, uh, you have mentioned where you are and what you're doing. You had uh, told me the, the, the Discord uh, DM, so I just want. I want people to know uh, what you're actually <laughs> doing uh, right now so they know, you know, you're not boring. 
Yeah, we're in Northern California right now, gold, gold mining. So, <laughs> I mean, it was a fun, it was a sporadic weekend trip. I'm like, okay, this will be fun. So, <laughs> yeah, we've been doing lots of lots of panning this past week, going out in the middle of a river and then then and then panning it. So, it's been fun. Yeah, it's definitely a, a change of scenery. Scenery, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right and jackson give a book a try i've had a few they're not that bad <laughs> and jackson says you are very interesting <laughs> yeah, so that that's um, what jackson would typically say yeah and this lady says complete protein I think that's Anna. Yeah. Who? Yeah. There's actually a lot of crawdads in the rivers here, actually. So Ooh. this one, I saw two today. Yeah. yeah. And yesterday, I think it was like three or four. But it was like they were under a rock, and I'd use another rock to brush them out, and then they'd just crawl away. So there's a photo of me holding one in a gold pan. Cool. Oh, it was like six inches long, I think. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I had a fishing Ooh. trip a while back, and uh, it was to a river, kind of like that. And everybody was fishing for fish, and then I just kind of gave up. And that whole day, everybody got skunk. They didn't catch any fish. But, like, at one point, there was a mussel that had closed. It, it wasn't hooked on the hook, on the on the hook that I want to cast my rod out. It just closed on it, and it was in sand rather than attached to a rock. And so <laughs> I up out of the water, and I was like, what? I caught a shellfish. And so I just popped it off the hook because it, it closed on the round part. And then I put it back. And then later in that day, I found a, a crawfish. And then I found other bugs and things. And so they were like, at the end of the day, Anna caught the most random things. Nobody else caught it. I'm surprised you didn't like, catch, catch like a boot or something. Mm hmm Yeah. It was weird, though. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. I keep writing in the chat. And I, I can just say it on the live stream. It's like... yeah. Most of the world eats insect, and to them, that that's normal food. Just had yeah. to say. Um, yeah, but back on like creativity, art business, all of that. Uh, what's some general business advice that might apply to creatives that you have that you want to share? Mm. Yeah, I you mean... don't like sharing because you're not <laughs> person at all. Yeah. So I had a friend this past week um, who was like, "Hey, I want to start a business, right?" And he's like, "He wants to like, he wants to be like craze like create like graduation lays, right?" And it's like, "Okay, well, it's like honestly, if you can avoid creating an item, do it. It's it's like <laughs> if you if you can if you can like drop ship some from something from China or provide a service or like a download link to something, you'll make so much more money. Mm -hmm. It's Intriguing. it's for a lot of creatives, even like specifically, it's like yes." selling a physical copy is nice and all but it's like once you can create the the, the business model of not having any um nothing no mm -hmm. tangible product in hand it's the best way to do it because now there's no overhead now you don't have to hire employees pay for <laughs> pay for like health care checks mm -hmm. so you even like for example like creating establishing your own brand right like i keep saying this but like tiktok is a uh, is a is a gold mine right now where it's like, yeah, you anyone can create a video and get a quarter million views on it. So, it's that in itself is marketable. Once you have a few of those, you've you've already gotten in ten thousand plus followers at that point, and then you can get sponsors at that point. So, it's it's definitely marketable. And so, uh, it, Instagram's hard to grow on. It really is. So so is like mm -hmm. Twitch. It's like even with like mm -hmm. Twitch, you bring over your audience. You don't grow on Twitch. So even with like podcasts whatnot, yes, YouTube's nice to grow on, but it's like really, it's like you got to create on other platforms or even invest in ads, right? Mm -hmm. um, one thing I noticed with like ads, I came in with this like mindset of, oh yeah, you just like buy ads once and you call it good, right? But a, mm -hmm. a lot of businesses is actually, they'll, they'll invest like a certain amount. For example, like they'll invest like a thousand dollars into like Google ads, right? Or even actually Facebook ads is actually a better example because you get more for your money, but um, with Facebook ads, I think it's like 23 cents right now per click to, to your website, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a penny per view. So, I mean, most sales though on a website, for example, if you're selling a board game where you have $15 profit mm -hmm. though per sale, um, and you get an average of 
one of a hundred people on that website buy it, you're still breaking even, right? So right. It's, it's hard though, trying to be in a, try to keep it profitable, right? Where it's like, okay, yeah. you have to make a decent enough ad where people want to click on it, right? Um, there's this ad or ad, there's this, um, this media website right now. There's an ad going on Facebook. They have over a quarter million views and only two likes on the post. Mm. So like someone oh. didn't make a clickable ad. So, and that happens. It's like, how do we find this neat balance between wanting to have a clickable ad, not being clickbait, but also not being obnoxious at the same time, right? Because you have those, a lot of posts, uh, even like a few years ago, it was like, you'd see a stop sign and be like, stop scrolling. Or yeah, have someone like run up to the camera, yeah. stop scrolling. And it's like, yes, that's an interesting tactic and all, but it gets old and really annoying, right? I don't see like yeah. Skittles or like Oreo using those ads, right? For, for the most part, what they do is they try to show off their product in a way that makes your, your mouth savor and then you want to go buy their product, right? Right. So I typically don't see these stop scrolling and, and then instantly go, oh, I want, I want to buy your product. It's never happened. So <laughs> it, it's a different way to look at it in a sense. Right. Oh, that's cool. And uh, speaking of buying products, you can buy an Anna Rob mug on Teespring, and there is a description in the uh, in the and there's a link in the description below. You can also go into Anna Rob's uh, link tree, so you can uh, buy your very own mug. Which uh, also Anna doesn't have inventory. Of this it, we just do it. She does it off uh, Teespring, so they yep. they make it, they ship it. Uh, you buy it, you get it. Yeah, yeah, got to do something with those portfolio pieces, as I always. Do. <laughs> yeah. Now, with oh, Teespring yeah. versus Redbubble, which one's more profitable? Because I'm like, I want to say is Teespring is, because Teespring is more of like creatives, because I know like Mark Rober is on there as well. So like, there's, okay. there's quite a few people, on, all few on people on on, uh, Teespring. I actually don't have a Redbubble, but I know a few people who, who have it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure which is more profitable. I think it just depends on how you market. They made like dollars on Redbubble, I think. There's a few like designs, like uh, I had a few political ones where it was um, like text bubbles and whatnot. It was one of those like the dictionary memes where it was like gun control, and it was like it had, like, had a definition for it, right? And I think that has over like 20 sales on it right now. Or just people are just buying stupid like <laughs> stupid political memes, right? Those sell for some reason on my red bubble. I don't know why. Because people have money. I guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> I guess so. I think I make like. 35 cents or so per sale and they sell them for like three bucks so it's like it's not that much yeah i mean and that, they don't even give free shipping either it's like free shipping over 25 dollar orders so I mean, they're making quite a bit of money it might only cost them 10 cents to make that sticker if that so oh, yeah. and uh you see the that link tree there that's the turaco crave cast uh link tree and there is actually a teespring store there with a uh, shirt for the Turaco Creative Cast and a few of my shirts, and we're gonna have uh, more stuff there. And uh, I've bought a sticker from uh, Teespring before. Do I have it here? Well, oh, I have it somewhere, but uh, it's a, their stickers are pretty huge. They're like this big, uh, but they can get pricey. Uh, so you pay mm -hmm. for the sticker itself, and you also pay for shipping, and there's a, a fee. So they can get uh, pretty pricey. Uh, but you know, uh, some of their quality is actually pretty good. You know, like this mug is this Teespring, so it's a pretty good. Uh, I like this. Uh, I like this mug. I like the the, the way the design uh, looks. I've I've seen some where the design doesn't really uh, the way they put it on. It's not that great, but it came out really. It's a really good printing on on this mug. I'm really glad that you. I have a few shirts on there also. I have a shirt that I bought uh, from there, so they're, they're actually not that bad. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We got a comment here. <laughs> yeah. So I went to Comic Fest, right? So Comic Comic Fest in San Diego, like, it was like March, like right before COVID hit, right? It was one of like the last yeah. event ever, right? Uh, well, not ever, but, <laughs> but one of the last events before COVID, right? <laughs> Um, no one was wearing masks, right? Like there was, I don't think there was any COVID cases afterwards either. It was like right, right, right before it, right? Um, same people run okay. Comic Con San Diego, like the actual one, right? Uh, Washington and Anaheim now, but I digress. Um, 
a lot of the creator, the creators are actually instead of using Teespring, a lot of them what they'll do is they'll just do their own inventory and they'll go to like local t-shirt shops, and they're like back in back home like Huntington Beach, West Westminster area around there. They have quite a few like t-shirt shops with like UV printing. It's I think it's around four dollars per t-shirt. So hmm. at that point, it's, it's pretty cheap. But also, you're, you're supporting a small business as well. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see what you have yeah. local because typically they'll be they have to beat Redbubble and this to print everyone else, but they won't get a sale. So mm -hmm. typically they're cheaper. Yeah, I know in the the future here, not too far off probably, I'll be looking around in my own town because I know there are some local shops that I'm interested in that might be interested in holding some of this stuff that I've got. Designs, yeah. comic shops. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, and the cards and comics are still doing quite well when they're in Olympia. Mm -hmm. Talk with them because they have a lot of comics still, like a lot, quite a large uh, supply of like board games as well. I think they had like every single Catan expansion. <laughs> so quite a few. Nice. Do you okay. have uh, goals like? to continue in this route of like entrepreneurial sort of creative uh, routes of business or do you, what, what's your kind of plan for that? Yeah, no, no, for sure though. Yeah. Um, it's like, I see it almost growing into a, a brand in a sense. Right. But I also want to stick on the, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset of just keep building assets. Right. It's a, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't, Yes, I'll be like I'll be happy eventually with, with with like businesses that I've created, right? But also, you still have to put in the work at the beginning, actually getting them to create revenue, right? The revenue part at the beginning is the important part because then you can reinvest in the company, right? So, the the initial project, for example, even like note to note, right? It's like it's sure it's like you're committing a lot of time in the beginning, but then once you actually get the pro the product of of itself, then you're, you're actually making revenue. And then from that, you reinvest in more products, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just like one time profit kind of thing. Right. You, you continually reinvest. Yeah. And I think that uh, in general applies to a lot of entrepreneurial type businesses is putting all that extra time. And, and sometimes it seems a little crazy to put so much time or work into a product that doesn't immediately pay off. Yeah. Like writing songs, doing um, projects that'll be for crowdfunding projects creating comic mm -hmm. you can sometimes have years go into it before it's ever published yep oh yeah and uh i have an example here of a, a comic like that this comic was uh i want to say roughly five years in the making keith harper started this uh oh, five years ago with just a a few sketches of it. and you get it you actually see one of the sketches he has in here mm -hmm. uh, which you can get on his uh, link tree, there's an Etsy story. Actually, I think he's sold out, but he's ordering uh, a new batch, so you can uh, check that out. And it's only uh, four ninety nine. It's a uh, you know, five mm -hmm. bucks. You can get this in your hands, and for fifty bucks, you get an autographed copy. And I think he also has, uh, with that price, he he has uh, some limited print. So uh, you know, check that out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I and I, and I can attest to this. You know, she's been working on her uh, comic for a few years. I've been working on mine also for a few years. And uh, there's a preview in the Nine Volt Anthology, which there's a description in the uh, link. In, there's a link in the description below to the Nine Volt Comics uh, link tree. Uh, you can get the first issue and the second issue now out. Anna is in the second issue i'm in both issues uh but just getting those stories in there uh, those took a while a lot of those stories were um years in the making uh you know so you know making comics doing anything you want to do anything that you have passion for uh takes time and it takes effort yeah, yeah. the experience that goes uh, creating the final product too. Sometimes you'll spend years working on a whole bunch of separate projects that'll prepare you mm -hmm. for the final product. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
Yeah, recently I'm working on missinggamepieces.com and it's been, I think officially it's been nine months in the making right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's been a long progress, right? Of uh, Originally I was like, okay, sweet, I'll just go, go to like Goodwill, buy a bunch of like uh, cheap board games, sell the parts, right? And then after that, I was like, okay, well, what if I don't want to hold inventory? All right, well then, okay, do we offer a 3D printing services, right? And then do you go to like Shapeways and make like $3 off every single purchase, right? But from an economical standpoint, we actually do it, offer the consumer a cheaper product and actually make more money if we did it ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like you're shipping on, for example, if I were to like 3D print a um, like pawn for like the game, sorry, right? Like mm-hmm. I either buy one from China for I think it's around three cents each, but I'm buying a hundred of them from like AliExpress. So I think my overall, overall cost is like a few dollars, right? Or I 3D print one with my existing plastic, make a decent quality one and sell it for a dollar, right? And then they pay for shipping and then my overall profit, I think is like not almost like $2 or so. Shapeways, the consumer is paying almost like $10 for that same piece. I'd only be making, I think a dollar fifty. So you make more actually selling it yourself, which is weird, weird but I don't want to have to like keep over the, all the overhead, right? right. But also it's, like, it's, it's in, instead of like, do, only focusing on the making money profit, but also offering a service as well, right? Where it's like, okay, we'll, all, we'll also 3D print game game mods. For example, like Catan, I have five different mods available, right? Where it's you have mm-hmm. card holders, you have all of your pieces, you have a, a larger robber, um, and you also have quite a few trophies that are all 3D, right? So, and all of those, it's like they all belong to their respective owners, but people, I'm just like Shapeways. I provide a 3D printing service. They come to their files with me. I print it. I'm not making money on the file. I'm making money on the plastic, right? right? So it's even with anything with like that, what I do is I link back to the original site and those don't cost anything. I don't, I don't print those. So it's, but I offer a 3D printing service. I'm not charging for the files, right? So a lot of companies, they avoid the copyright issues, even though they're a copyright at one point. on think that you could sell them, but I can't do that with a clean conscience. Somebody else made them. I want to pay them a percentage, but at least... I'll give them a link over to the Thingiverse page and they can go over there and use it. But um, a lot a lot of the games for like Catan, I've been building assets for my, by myself. And all those, um, I'm using a plugin called like uh, WordPress Downloader. And it allows me to add, uh, add the downloads to the site. But also, for example, if you're a user and you want to download that model, right? I make it worth one credit. When you sign up, you get 20 credits for free. You get five for every comment, one for every like. So you get this overall credit, and the more you interact with the site, the more free downloads you get. And you can also buy credits you want. So also, I think I'm going to make it where credits are also used for 3D printing, but the but shipping will always cost money. So then I never lose money, because it's like, okay, it costs me like three cents for plastic, right? So it's not a huge deal. But once if they pay for, uh, for, for shipping, it's not a big deal. So e- emphasizing that. So I'm... Just spending a lot of time recently. I mean, probably in the past like month and a half, probably spent like a good like twenty plus hours working on it. Right, where it's a lot of like the behind the scenes stuff. I switched over from using like a free website uh, platform, but over to using like WordPress. And then once I'm done with that, I'll be hosting on AWS instead. Because AWS, even with like around ten thousand views on your site, it's like ten dollars a year. It's nothing. So mm-hmm. it, it's like a tenth of a penny per click. Oh. So. Yeah, and I already have a few sponsors who want to be on the front page of the website as well. That is cool. So, right. we're like, hey, can we have our board game featured? And also, can we be the official board game supplier of this? So, mm-hmm. they, I think it was like $100 for an entire month. So, just of being on the front page and having a link to their website. So, nice. That is epic. Yeah. So, I think I'll note to note will also be the same. We'll be having that on the page as well. But this. Any game that we create that has like missing game parts as well for it, like we're gonna go ahead and like put that on missing game pieces. So it's like, it's also hard though, for example, like, thinking about names, right? Where it's like, okay, how do I think of a name that sticks out? For example, like furnicharge.com is like, you search for furnicharge, F U R N I C H A R G E on Google, we're still number one, right? And it's like, because it's a unique name. But if you search for missing game pieces, I'm probably the third page on Google, right? And it's mm-hmm. like the way to get up high up on Google is with their SEO scores is really on making blog posts about stuff because Google mm-hmm. values blog posts over home pages. So right. 
it's it's learning what Google values, but also the cheap way of getting on um, getting high up on Google, which is what we did, is you go on a bunch of Reddit forms for the entrepreneurs, and you just post your link everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're like, oh, you have the most links. Okay, so Furniture Charge is still the number one. I haven't posted any new links in the past year and a half now, I think. <laughs> so it just stayed on top. And that's what happens. You have a, a good name, but also I think we get the most amount of traffic. I'm still getting, I think, around 1,200 views each year right now. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I need to make it into like a, this like 3D printing service for like the like nightstand mods or something. Or like start like <laughs> drop shipping like wireless chargers from China or whatever. I, I have the name, I, I the trademarks available, and it's like I need to go for this. I'll be another revenue source, or just like give Amazon affiliate links to like furniture stuff that you can buy. Yeah, that'd be great. Because <laughs> I mean, well, I think my overall cost hosting is free, and I'm paying twelve dollars a year for my domain. That's it. So, mm -hmm. and then you can buy SSL a one time fee for thirty bucks. So. I don't need, I'm not selling anything on it right now. It's all a fake checkout for a virtual business. So stuff like that doesn't matter that much, like whatever. But it's, I have a lot of projects and it's also the um, cost analysis of my, my time and my money, right? Where it's like, okay, which one's more profitable? And it's like, how do you pick projects? Right? Whether it's a, a comic book or it's a design you're just doing somebody or a logo you're designing, it's like, which one will cost, um, the least amount of my time would also make me the most, right? This Absolutely. past week, I <laughs> this past week, like I heard you'd make a logo, right, Anna? And it's yeah. like, yeah, well, in that time, I was making uh, thirty forty five dollars an hour working on somebody's website, and it's like, okay, well, I I can pick between the two, right? Like I can either do a, I can make a website and make more money, or I can do the logo myself. Which one costs me the most? Amount, well, which one costs me the least amount of money? So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes delegating stuff actually makes sense sometimes. It's weird. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. And you can see that logo on the uh, Popular Topics uh, Twitch and also on the Unpopular Topics Instagram. And Anna made that logo. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, really well. And, you know, oh. right now that we uh, just uh, mentioned on Unpopular Topics, can you uh, talk more about that podcast, what you actually do talk about? What <laughs> What yeah. You, what shows you got uh, planned, uh, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely a fun podcast. We'll be, I think this week we're talking about um, the elections. And um, uh, it's like, is it a, does does a vote for Trump count against Biden? It's like, it's just fun stuff like that. Or it's like, someone's like, some of the podcasts, like Keith is like voting for Kanye, right? And it's like, well, is that a vote towards the other person? How does this work? And really breaking into it, talking about these statistical um, chances, but also um, the Electoral College. So it's like, it's not necessarily, the name doesn't match the podcast, nor is like Jonathan Boring. I'm most I'm not like the most boring dude, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> we talk about a lot of random stuff, but also it's like what's current in the news as well. And it's like, we try to stay away from political stuff, but also it's more of a, we try to keep it mostly fact-based. Um, <laughs> Jackson's like, don't mess up, John. I'm no stress. <laughs> yeah, uh, no stress at all, Jackson. Yeah. Would take the air and demonetize. <laughs> <laughs> demonetized. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, what, what's cool though about unpopular topics in itself is we even like have the website as well, working on that as well. But um, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like you find a good name like that occasionally where it's like, okay, no one has this. So I go back in the way back means no one's owned the domain, domain I think for the past like 10 years. So there's mm -hmm. been, it's like unpopular topic seems like a really good name. It, it is right. And I think our website will be number one pretty soon. So we'll be adding blog posts. Um, plus also a live stream part of the site where it's like, if we go, if we go down on YouTube or down on Twitch, cause they censor us, whatever, we'll have it on restream.io and it'll automatically put it on the website and it'll be live as well so it's like yeah we can't be really censored on our own platform so mm -hmm. being independent from everybody else is important that's what like steven crowder with like mug club does that as well right Where they're all independent right. so like play TV. all right going back to your uh missing game pieces thing would you ever consider doing like a custom or special edition type uh, or even commission 
unique game pieces that you could send out as individual pieces? Okay, on the website, actually, yes. So are we doing a? So I, I think we'll make it like a worth like a hundred points or something. But it's like, hey, request a model. And it's mm -hmm. also I want to be make a part of the website where it's like people. All, so there's right now we have um, member, admin, um, editor, and a few others, right? Or for example, if someone wants to be um, commission a project, right? They can say, hey, for a hundred points, if someone else submits this model, I'll give you a hundred points, right? So mm -hmm. I can have that transaction between users where it's a not an actual currency. They can just redeem that for, for then I'm not creating 3D models, but then they're rewarded to do it for other people. So mm -hmm. then what we'll do is we'll have the admins. Um, I have a few people who are willing to do it for free as well, which is kind of cool. But I just give them free downloads and like they're like, cool, right? So they're, they're happy with the free downloads part. Um, I'm also giving them like a 5% commission, right? It's like nothing, but it's like, it's say thank you for doing your work on the website, right? Where I'm, I'm having them actually like help me on the WordPress site, developing it, but also like working on the, this, this the C sharp page, the C, well, the CSS, also the Java side of the website, like cybersecurity as well. So mm -hmm. like moving over a website to Amazon is not that hard, but it requires a lot of people. So um, I have some friends helping me, with, helping me with that right now, but yeah, no. Um, I don't, my current commission thing on this website right now, though, is just like me creating 3D models. And I have a, I think it's like a $50 commission right now. So it's, it's not that much, but <laughs> Jackson, I'll tell you, yeah, you have, you, have a lot, you have a lot more experience than I do, I think. So Jackson's qualified. He uses Inventor. And come out, we're talking earlier about like why I like Fusion 360 over Inventor, but because he's using Inventor more than Fusion, that's why. But I think we all have a tendency of liking the things that we use more. Yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> like, I use Windows more than Mac. I'm using a Mac right now, but I like Windows more. But it's like, but for any banking info, whatnot, use Mac, right? But yeah. I don't know. You have any more uh, questions? Oh uh, yeah, I had a uh, one more that I had on my head right here. Unless I come up with another one, <laughs> which is, what has being like an independent kind of entrepreneurial type taught you about reaching out, networking, and getting other people involved to reach your your goals? Yeah, we. I actually had an entire like day in my uh, entrepreneurship class. We talked about this actually. I was I was teaching that. I was cool. Um, it was how to create a LinkedIn 101, right? And it was like, once you're 16, go create a LinkedIn, right? Because it's like, mm -hmm. you go connect people in your in your, in your your field, right? There's a lot of discussion posts, a lot of boards. Some people actually put out like commission stuff, whatnot, um, even some on Facebook and like the, and, and Reddit, right? And it's just creating an online presence where people actually, if they, if they have a need for something, they'll go to you, right? And it's like, even like me, for example, like Paul Bassi, the people, person I work with quite a bit who owns like part owner and connector games as well. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, I met him, my, my teacher had him uh, as a presentation speaker at a high school when I, uh, freshman year, I shook his hand, said hi, and then he I hired me for a few videos and that's the rest of the story, right? It's like a lot of that stuff involves that um, interpersonal relationships, right? Having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with people, but also, um using social networking to your advantage right so mm -hmm. i've had the most success on linkedin connecting with people but i also have this like this overall like rule on linkedin right it's like i have if i haven't shaken shaken hands with you like in person i'm not going to connect with you i'll message you but i'm not going to connect with you it's like i want to have people actually know who aren't creeps online <laughs> my, my uh, connections on linkedin because like your right. employer will look at will look like who are you connected with on linkedin that's one of the things they look at, right? Same for your Facebook. It's like, I don't, I removed a lot of my old Facebook memes because a lot of them are like cringe, but also your employer will look at that. Or it's like, you'll be judged on what you post online. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, when networking people in person and shaking their hands, uh, what's some advice that you could give for uh, doing that? Well, in the era of COVID, hand sanitizer is important. All jokes aside, though. Um, <laughs> all, all jokes aside, though, actually, there's, there's, we've gone to this point where it's all like NFC instead of exchanging business cards. I still have business cards, right? But, I mean, most of my stuff that I exchange, though, is more of, hey, here's my LinkedIn. Here's my LinkedIn code. Um, if I'm going out to any event, typically I'll set my LinkedIn code as my phone wallpaper. 
So I'll turn on my phone, I'll show my phone, and they just scan it on their LinkedIn app, and now they're connected with me, right? So I try to prioritize LinkedIn. Um, also having your own website, like jonathanboring.com, right? Stuff like that, you want to have your own online presence, right? And it's like, yes, having your name as a website is like a way to doing a way of doing it, but also um, it, when talking in person with someone, it's like, you, you're marketing yourself to them, right? It's like, okay, and what, they're gonna be judging you. That's how, that's how it works. Like, it's like not exactly biblical to judge somebody, but when we judge people in a respectful manner sometimes, right? Where it's mm -hmm. like, do I wanna do business with you or not, right? And it's like, you have to come from an aspect of, um, you have to know that the, typically, humans are lazy, right? It's like the first people, typically if I walk in like Napa Auto Parts, I want them to help me with my problem. I don't have to go like drive across town to somewhere else, right? It's People, they want to work with you, but you have to make it seem like you actually value and care about them. If you don't, then you go somewhere else, right? So list, actively listening back and forth in the conversation and, and knowing it's like, oh, hey, Anna, it's like, I have, a, I have a logo project I like. I want you to work on for me, right? And it's like, we're one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one dialogue. I'm hearing what you're saying, but also I want to help you at the same time, right? It's, ha it's even like Napa Auto Parts, right? It's like you go in there, hey, I want to buy a a new oil filter and like cool i have five in stock do you want to buy one sure it's, it's this back and forth conversation right right so a lot of us for like instagram marketing for example um we'll like mass spam people right there's like bots like github you can go message a thousand people every hour right um instagram's cracking down on that which is kind of annoying but i used to use that actually quite a bit just like trying to get more instagram followers We're like hey go follow me i just spam it to a bunch of people but now, now Instagram is like, hey, stop messaging people. And a lot, a lot of um, times I mess people on Instagram, it goes in their 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 general area, not the primary, right? So it's it's all ignored. But also, then I'll go into the request section where it's like, hey, you don't have any connections. This person's messaging messaging you. Do you actually want to read this? And mm -hmm. that in itself is like, yeah, it's kind of annoying. It's like I'll, I'll be messaging someone who. Ask for like a Discord invite, right? Or like we create this Discord called Earth, right? I think we're gonna have probably like eleven hundred people in there in the next few months, right? But um, stuff like that, where it's like they ask for a link in the description of like an Instagram page, right? And then I message them on on Instagram, but it sends me to their recommended on the well the request section on Instagram, where it's like I'm trying to message you, but I can't. Yeah, okay. LinkedIn doesn't have that. LinkedIn it just accepts everybody who messages you. So, I mean, the text spam and all, um, I get probably a good, like, three or four people on in, on in LinkedIn a day just saying, hey, can I market for your business? And it's like, no. It, it's, they try to connect with you, and it's like, they have a good, like, few thousand connections, and it's like, yeah, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. it, it gets old. It really does. That's what it's, that's the difficulty with being on LinkedIn, right? You, I get a lot of messages, and, like, some of them are actually encouraging, where it's like, hey, thanks for thanks for helping me on this project. Um, and they, they might like um, recommend you or like put a ready or for a referral or a, a kind note on your LinkedIn profile. And like, that's nice to know, which is why I have notifications on in the first place. But then again, I get spammed a lot. So it's like mm -hmm. that balance between do I even leave notifications on anymore? Right. It's annoying. I didn't have Instagram notifications on for a while. Cause like, Anyone who messaged me, it's like if it was actually a friend, I'd just give them my phone number. Like, I you don't need to message me on Instagram. So, and uh, we have hey, a Jeff. special Good guest, someone in the uh, yeah. chats, Jeff Lafferty, and uh, you can get Jeff Lafferty's uh, Berserk or Not on Indiegogo still in demand. And uh, Jeff Lavery is actually the uh, one of the creators of the original art cast, uh, which our old uh, show was a uh, kind of a tribute uh, to that. Uh, but yeah. right now we're doing our our own thing, but it we still keep that art cast uh, spirit. So uh, Jeff, as soon as uh, I have the chance, I will uh, be modding you. So don't worry. <laughs> You are going to get a wrench. That's why he showed up. And uh, we hope to have Jeff on soon as a guest. And here we have <laughs> Jeff's co-host, Gibbon <laughs> Redinger. And we've had uh, Gib as a guest on the old show, but 
Uh, we are very happy to have them on again, uh, both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, just, uh, you know, November 4th, Jeff, November 4th, keep that open, and I'll have uh, both you and Gib on. Uh, we'll, we'll have both of you on uh, that day, so uh, just keep that date open. And uh, hold on, let me just uh, kick Gib out. Hold on. <laughs> well, uh, put time out. No, okay. Anna, you're just cut out. I cut out. Yeah, just a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, okay. I was gonna say when when uh, we disappear, for reason both uh, Jeff and Gib are gonna host the. I can't believe it's not the Taraco Creative Cast. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, that's actually what uh, what we did. Uh, they went on hiatus. And we came up with, I can't believe it's not the art cast. And mm -hmm. then we just uh, did our, our own thing. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, thanks to Jeff and Gib for giving us that uh, chance to get our name out there. So uh, we, we were at 56 minutes. We should go for an hour. So we still got a few minutes. So uh, Anna, any questions? Or hey, John, you got any questions for us? <laughs> yeah um how are you guys marketing yourselves so i see you guys like, you're on instagram a little bit like facebook groups and all but like anything besides that uh we are on uh discords i'm on a few uh different discords and mm -hmm. we're part of the triple a uh, creators of community uh the comic book community so we usually just uh you know put in self promo we talk to each other it's a really good community uh, so uh, we actually get a few people from from that coming over, but since this is actually a brand new channel, mm -hmm. uh, we're not getting a lot of traffic right now, but hopefully that will pick up. And I do uh, market on Facebook. I just go on the Facebook group. I go on my, uh, just on my, my regular Facebook, on my personal uh, WhatsApp account, my, my, my phone account. I'll post up there all the time. Um, Instagram. I I had a Twitter. I don't really recommend uh, Twitter that much. Uh, <laughs> but if there's any other uh, platforms you recommend, uh, we'd we'll love to hear them. John, what are your thoughts on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I only use Twitter um, for for what for reading Elon Musk tweets, okay, Trump tweets, and that's it. I don't market anything on Twitter. Twitter's not my place I go. Yeah. Twitter, typically people on Twitter are either going to read news. Um, that's about it. They're not they're not looking for a podcast update or it's like a YouTube link. It's like mm -hmm. some people, they might like yeah. post a link. To it. It's like, hey, we're live, but posting it, having it be your only post on Twitter every single time is like, hey, we're live. Um, that gets old. So like, it's like, how do you market yourself being live? It's like, I think the best way is being on Instagram stories, probably Instagram and Snapchat stories. Cause on it, on at least Snapchat, um, any, you, anyone can swipe up and watch your stream. Right. And then that just sends them directly mm -hmm. to YouTube. And what's, what's fun about Snapchat, right? Zoom is like friend, of, a friend, of a bunch of people. Right. And then like, they're all actual people as well. Um, and you know that if they have the, the bitmoji, right. That, um, mm -hmm. icon they create themselves, right. Cause it's an actual person. Yeah. The AIs don't create that. So like I'll go through, I'll go find like a hundred people almost every day, right? It takes only a few minutes, right? I think I have a good like twenty five hundred friends. So now my entire Snapchat story probably go publish like a link to like my podcast, right? It's like okay, we just got six hundred views on that for free. That's like the equivalent of me paying like a, probably a good like four dollars for that on Facebook. Wow. So it's four dollars, four dollars, four dollars. So like that kind of stuff is like if you can leverage having an online me uh, social media presence but it doesn't cost you anything do it yeah yeah instagram is a lot harder to go on but also it's cool is just using that that snapchat method and then bringing the force all of them or just like hey go follow my instagram i've gotten a good think 25 followers this past week just from doing that right or it's it's just you friend a bunch of people on snapchat and then say hey go follow my instagram just move them over mm -hmm. so that's really cool yeah. Yeah, we're pretty um, like 
we did the I can't believe it's not the art cast, but this is our first show officially for the Toronto Creative Cast. So we're yeah. we're pretty new at the marketing thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think you like uh, yeah. I, I'm a little bit paranoid about it, right? Where it's like starting any new like business assets. For example, like missinggamepieces.com. I'm not gonna market it till I'm entirely, entirely done with the project, right? It's like I, it's been in the works and this uh collecting digital dust, if you will, right? It's like it's been been sitting on a an SSD somewhere and it's been it's like I'll slowly work on it or like over the past like past year, right? But it's like the majority of my time spent on it is working on games, but also learning how to use WordPress. And then from there it's like, okay, WordPress sucks, I'm gonna have to leave it. And it's like getting frustrated like buying like forty nine dollar plugins and then okay, whatever. Right. It's mm -hmm. this back and forth battle of wanting to learn something and not wanting to learn it. And then also um Sometimes you get tired of working on a project, right? Which is like nice having multiple yep. at the same time, right? Where it's like I have um, uplifting CNC, which is kind of the back burner right now. But I did a lot, a lot of like um, CNC art. That was fun. Um, missing game pieces, working on YouTube stuff, um, on tutorials, and then doing TikTok stuff. It's like doing TikTok, having videos go viral, and then bringing that. Say, hey, if you want a longer format video of this and more of an in depth, bring them over to YouTube. Because YouTube, you get more ad revenue from it. Just an FYI, do not join the uh, the TikTok Creators Program. <laughs> Your viewership will tank from having over half a million to a million views per video down to around a thousand views. Hmm. So, hmm. I was looking at these statistics for um, Investment Joy, and after we got after we left the Creator Program, our views went up over ninety percent. So. Huh? Yeah, TikTok, because they're giving you money and ad revenue for your views, they devalue your video and they show it last or don't show it at all. So it basically does not it is not put on the FYP page, the for you page at all. But also it doesn't get spread out at all. So hmm. we make more money from actually getting sponsorships by not joining the creator fund. So that's very good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a lot of friends, a few of them that like 20,000, 21,000 followers on TikTok and like join the creator fund just to make some money because they're high school students and then just views tank to like 200 per video and it's like, I get more than that. Mm -hmm. It's like, I actually got rid of all my videos on my TikTok account because there's all this like silly videos, right? And I want to go more towards like the serious professional mm -hmm. mindset, right? Also like presenting yourself with someone they, they can go out to and like commission stuff as, as well, right? So I'm just starting is from a blank palette. That's why I haven't seen your videos. <laughs> All right, so we just reached the one hour mark. If you want to follow Jonathan, you can check out his Instagram oh, there, Jonathan Boring. Uh, and I just want to give a again a a plug to Keith Harper. You can check out Davy Rocket Almanac. It's still on Webtoons, uh, but you want to get your own physical copy. Uh, his Etsy store is in the uh, link tree below. And uh, again, quick shout out to Jeff. You can find uh, Berserker Not still in demand on Indiegogo issue one. Uh, you can get your own copy. And uh, th uh, this is actually a, every page in here is, is it's a work of art. You know, everything in here is uh, hand painted by him mm -hmm. uh, and, and scanned. But, uh, and where you can find me, let me just get my uh, my stuff up here. You can go to my link tree. You can find my YouTube channel, Salazar Art Nation. I also have a link to my coffee account. So if you want to drop me a donation, you can do that. And for just a few bucks, you get some free PDF comics. Uh, so there's that. And don't forget to check out the Toronto Creative Cast link tree. You can uh, check out our stuff there. Keith Harper is on there too. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Anna, where can we find you? Uh, well, on my link tree first. And then also I can be found on YouTube at Anna Rob and on Instagram at Anna Rob Arts. I'll be expanding a little bit more in the future, but I'm. I'm still working on some stuff behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, get to it, Anna. <laughs> All right, uh, everyone, thanks for coming out, hanging out with us. Thanks for chatting. Thanks to our guest, Jonathan Boring. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We will see you next time. And we are...